Hello and good morning, wherever you might be on the globe. We have got an extraordinary, extraordinary um, show for you today. And I'm just welcoming everybody to join us. And I will be starting the program officially in a few moments as we have some more people joining us today. I hope you're having a great weekend. The weekend, uh, the week that just passed uh, was kind to you and it gave you joy and happiness, whatever the challenges were this weekend. And this episode is going to be one that's going to be invigorating and it's going to be really refreshing and exciting because it's all about positivity. Henry and Friends Live podcast is all about pos positivity. So we welcome you. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Henry Weinreich, your host, and this is Henry and Friends Live podcast. If this is your first time either viewing us or hearing us and listening to us, we welcome you. If this is a return and you've come to watch and listen to our podcasts once more, we love your participation as we grow our network. Um, the best way you can support Henry and Friends Live is popping on the YouTube channel whenever you have a moment and clicking our subscribe button. It helps the analytics. But we really love your participation and we definitely invite your uh, initiating conversations through our comment box, whether you're watching through YouTube or LinkedIn, um, live um, or on our website uh, or on our Facebook Henry and Friends Live page. We are exactly as we speak, 4.30 p.m. on a Saturday afternoon in New York, which makes it 11, sorry, 9.30 p.m. in London. I have to get my times right. Uh, on a Saturday night, which makes it Sunday, 6.30 a.m. in Tokyo, and here in Sydney, Australia, it is exactly 8.30 a.m. Welcome. It's fantastic to see you. I think it's time for us to ask you to pull up a sofa, make yourself comfortable, grab a beverage of your choice, a coffee or tea, or if it's a cocktail and it's the appropriate time and uh, age group, welcome, because we're going to have an amazing show coming up, and let's do our traditional countdown Henry and Friends Live, right around the globe. Welcome. And we're back. Henry and Friends Live, thank you so much for joining us, wherever you might be on the in the globe. It's really interesting because I think at this time of the year, you know, we're hurtling towards truly the end of the year. We've just had celebrations for those that celebrated Thanksgiving. We're about to do Hanukkah. Christmas is around the corner. You've got Eid coming up in 2022. It's all happening. And I wanted to have interviews for the next weeks before we go on our summer hiatus um, with things that really are relevant to our mindset for the end of 2021. And I wanted this to be an interview about the things that we probably would want to do more of. And that's why, on this mindset, I wanted to do the top tips to winning success. And we have an extraordinary guest that's going to be talking about that in a moment. The interesting thing about our guest is, and her name is Jane Marshall, is she was born in Glasgow in 1969. She was a political animal activist in her teens. In her 30s, she commenced her own startups and was involved in digital media. In her 40s, she was in the corporate world. Jane Marshall, the corporate person, which involved in human-centered design and human-centered innovation. In her 50s, she was a power lifter. And during that time as well, in between 19, sorry, 2020 and 2021, she was dealing with chemotherapy treatment. And today, she's about to launch into publishing her book in 2022 with an extraordinary sit-down coffee table publication. And by the way, we are the first media outlet to actually interview the dynamic, the amazing, the incredible human being that is Jane Marshall. And I think it's only worthwhile that we give her a 30-second to 32-second graphic before we have her come on screen live. Welcome. Take a look at Jane Marshall.
Jane, good morning. <laughs> good morning. How are you this morning? Well, it's a beautiful, sunny morning here in Melbourne, and um, I've made an extra special effort to get out of bed early and do hair and makeup for you. Dug out my vegan leather jacket, my vegan prayer beads. Ve oh, it's got to be vegan. Got my sound award. So I'm just here for the energy, Henry. You're here for the energy. Not so much the words, Jane. It's all about the energy. It's all about the energy, which we're really going to delve into um, in a moment. Uh, the interesting thing is we've had some fantastic conversations this week um, in preparing uh, this interview. And I want to thank you so much for your time, because as we speak and as we sit and as people coming in from all over the globe to sit down on their sofa and listen to our interview, and we're appreciative of that. As we're speaking, Jane, this very second, as the time second is ticking and ticking, your book that is taking you two years and a lifetime to write is now being printed for publication in 2022. <laughs> How do you sleep? <laughs> well, it's a bit it's a bit crazy because I found myself the other day putting author on my um, Instagram and my LinkedIn and so on. So it's um, it's quite a moment. Uh, but honestly, you know, the book wrote itself. It just felt like it came organically. So, um, yeah, it's a huge moment, but it also just feels really right. It feels like, it feels like, um, in a way, it feels like the first thing I've ever done in my life where there is absolutely not a shred of doubt that it's the right thing to be doing and it's a, it's a really good quality. It just, it feels right. So like, I don't have a hugely emotional reaction to it. It just, it's that feeling you get where you know you're doing the right thing at the right time for the right reason. And there's a kind of peace that comes with that. But my, my thought there is because obviously you're very self-effacing and, 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 and you play things down. You are British after all. I so am. You are. Um, the interesting thing is that we both know, as I'm going through the process myself, it's really, as we say in Australia, hard yakka. It it's is. really difficult. It's the, uh, We know ourselves because we talk about this. The 4 a.m. starts, the 12 and 14 hour days, you forget to eat lunch. It's not, not to mention editing for four months and reading your own words 20 times till you're sick of them um, in the final phase. So you've written the book and you think you've written the book and then you don't realize that there's then like four months of editing and then there's all of the PR and marketing. So like it's writing the words is only just the start of it. Well, I want to ask you, because we're going to go into the second part, and all those who've joined us, welcome to Henry and Friends Live. We have Jane Marshall in the hot seat talking about her soon-to-be-published in 2022 book, uh, The Naked Truth About Breast Cancer. Can I ask you, how much pain was involved in writing this incredible um, breakthrough uh, book, and how much joy did it give you? It felt to me that the book... Uh just wrote itself. Um, and so the writing process itself was relatively easy because I was writing about my own story and I was writing about my own experience and I was doing it in a way that that is completely unfiltered. I mean, the book is two years of my own completely unfiltered diary and experience. And there's something really I mean, it's deeply terrifying to put your own personal diary out into the world, particularly a diary that covers something so big as breast cancer and life and death and fear and all of those things. But there's something also really freeing about it. I mean, it's your story. It's your experience. Nobody can question it. It is what it is. Um, and also, I would say, uh, it, you know, it was very therapeutic for, for myself writing the book you know because uh in a way it helped me make my own peace with what's happened to me over the last two years can i ask you this question um we all hear people saying they're going to write a book okay mm -hmm. and i'm not and this is not a criticism it's not a, a whatever but it's a very different story to know that as we're sitting here in this interview right here and now no drama intended your book is being printed jane and you're going to be going on a massive world media tour and you're going to be connecting directly with women that really need to hear your story about the naked truth about breast cancer. But my question to you is, how do you get past the finish line? What motivated you? 
God, that's a really interesting question. Like, I think um, whether it's writing a book or whether it's training for a powerlifting competition and a personal best, like your or whether it's surviving cancer. I mean, the your choice in life is always much more simple. Humans like to make things really complicated, but I think life is really simple. You either do or you don't. And that makes me sound a bit like Yoda, but um, no. that, that's your choice. In any moment when life is hard, you keep going or you stop. That That's it. It's as simple as that. And the difference in life is between, you know, the people who do things are the people who choose in the difficult moments, I'm going to keep going, yes. and the, the people who, who don't. And, again, no judgment. I mean, there's a time to, no. there's a time for all of us when the answer is to stop. Right. But that's, a, that's a really good point, because the thing is, you're quite right. And I love how I think because you go through and we're going to go through a little bit of your life. We have some questions already from all around the globe, all those sitting on your sofa and watching and listening. Welcome again. Um, the interesting thing is it's we want to understand the mindset because you told me it was all about energy. And you're right. It's either you do it or you don't. I want to take you back to your roots for a second. We have a question from Newcastle, New South Wales, uh, awesome. this side of the world. Um, what was life like? in Glasgow you know what was it like growing up there Jane uh, well so we left Glasgow when I was four um, my dad joined the RAF so we did the whole Germany and Cyprus touring RAF bases um, I mean Glasgow I think what a lot of people in Australia maybe don't realize about the UK is that you know post-war the UK was a very poor country you know there was food rations um, most of the, you know, it was before we had this kind of, uh, emerging middle class. So most places in the North, you know, Glasgow, Manchester, they were very poor. They were very industrial, uh, you know, it was shipbuilding. It was, it was trains. It was, it was the old economy before the world changed and became about financial services and so on. So as we discover your story and how you went through quite a myriad of different life experiences, um, how fundamental was Glasgow in your life? And in a moment, we're going to be also uh, stepping into another part of your life, we're going to jump a little bit to your powerlifting, because I have questions uh, coming out about your powerlifting. But very quickly, what was the one pillar that you see or a couple of pillars from that hard, you know, harder upbringing that brought you through to today to say, I either will or I won't, and you do. So uh, it wasn't Glasgow specifically, but I do. I do think when you're working class, you stay working class, right? You nice. there is uh, you, you have to work hard, and I think uh, that sets you up for life, right? Um, nothing comes to you on a silver spoon. You have to work for it, and I think um, that's a good life lesson. Definitely is a good life lesson. And I have to say to you, we've got some beautiful comments from Lillian Weinreich. What a brave person. Uh, Donna Harris is saying she's a fellow vegan. I'd like us all <laughs> to actually sit back and watch this because I have to tell you, powerlifting is something that I think takes people's imaginations away. And so what better for us to actually visit this right here and now because we're going to actually show, I took it out of YouTube, Jane, I hope you don't mind. This is Jane, ladies and gentlemen, Jane Marshall, our official guest that is about to lift, not 50, not 60, not 80, <laughs> but 155 kilograms. Here she goes. This one's 150 kilos. Oh, I do apologize. What are the, you thinking the, when you're doing this? Um, honestly, uh, so when I do, when I keep go going, keep going, keep going. Oh. Yes, you got it, you got it, you got it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Go, go. <laughs> Whoa. When I, do, when I do, when I do a massive lift, I go to the same place I go to when I meditate or when I write. It's, uh, it's what I call the other place because I think you can't do. It's my belief you can't do amazing things from only your human sub your, your human mind right so if I thought about that lift I wouldn't make it if I thought about my book I wouldn't make it you have to kind of close down the human mind that finds reasons to be scared reasons to not do things and you have to go to this kind of magical dimension to life and ask it to help you I mean that's I how I got through you. cancer 
will believe that we're flying through the first half uh, part of the show. I told you it would go very, very quickly. Um, just in a few minutes, I'd like to understand before we talk about your top six tips. So, so far, the resounding message is either you do or you don't. And if you think in your mind, mind you can't, you won't. Obviously, that, that's interesting. Can you explain to us, and I know it's a very tender part of your life, um, and we've spoken about that through the week, and that is what was your mindset, honestly, um, into um, how you dealt with your chemotherapy? And then straight after that, we're going to talk about your top six tips to success. Um, if you could tell us in a few moments, in a few minutes, what was that like and, and what was your mindset, Jane? When I was first diagnosed with cancer, uh, so I had, I've had a spiritual practice for about 10 years. And when I first got diagnosed with cancer, uh, my mindset was um, all adversity leads you to greater self-knowledge, um, a greater connection with the divine and all of those things. And so uh, I was completely committed to being along for the ride and understanding that when adversity, uh, when life punches you in the face, those are the moments where you find yourself. It's the moments where you work out who you really are. And it's when you start to understand what life really is and what really matters and what doesn't matter. So I was completely committed to that. Um, and that being my predominant narrative for the whole cancer journey. If you ask me what my mindset was like, you know, six or eight months in, cancer was completely kicking my ass. And uh, there was a point where I started to really doubt whether um, any of the spiritual stuff was real and starting to feel like I was failing the spiritual test because, you know, the weeks after you've had chemo when you're in bed and you're vomiting on the bathroom floor, it's very, very hard to stay connected to the idea that this adversity is going to take you closer to your connection to your own heart and to the divine that is in all things. You're just thinking about, I feel really bloody sick right now. Um, so your mindset when you're in these dark moments, it kind of wavers, your strength, your courage wavers from time to time. But this comes back to what we talked about before. You just get up each day and you just put one foot in front of the other and that's your victory. And that's what I talk about in the book. There are times in life when life is so dark that just putting one foot in front of the other is your victory. I, that's we're going to pause there that's amazing and it's extremely humbling we're going to invite you back into the front chair in a moment um as i explained to all of you this uh this morning this afternoon this evening this is a an extraordinary interview as we hurtle into 2022 we look at ourselves and we uh, we establish and we evaluate what we've achieved and what we want to do more of and that's why i really want to invite uh, jane into the hot seat for this podcast because it's truly extraordinary uh we're talking about uh, coming up the top tips uh, to winning success, winning success um, in life um, and winning success, how to win it in life today. It's really extraordinary. Now, as part of our countdown, and we're going to be back with Jane in exactly one minute, uh, we we're going to be talking about her six top tips to winning success. We have got um, quite a fun show coming up. All our shows are fun. Um, but in, in the spirit of countdown, what would the end of 2021 be? without doing a countdown on the best dressed of 2021. Uh, next weekend, we have a great show ahead. I'll just do a little intro. Here we go. Joining me in the fashion hot seat next weekend will be the gorgeous Lucy Larita based in Melbourne. And on the other side of the globe, we're going to have Hannah Littman in Miami, Florida. It's going to be an amazing show. You want to see that countdown. And the question will be, who are you going to vote for the best dressed of all 2021? There's going to be some competition. And we are back, especially when you're wearing your vegan coat uh, jacket, which Lucy Larita who will be on next weekend, has said she loves. Did she um, like it? So that's high praise from Lucy. Well, we, Thank we you, love Lucy. it. Absolutely. So now we're going to go on to the next concept, which is going on to your top six tips of, um, I'm just finding that, bear with me, your top six tips on um, how to, you know, winning success. So the very first one we've got, Jane, if you want to take us through, is re-evaluating the definition of success. What do you mean by 
Uh, I really don't believe in the idea of success at all anymore. I mean, having cancer was a really brutal but incredibly um, clarifying sense of what matters in life. And you realize that maybe not now, but at some time you're you're going to be dead and this is all going to be over and that sounds depressing but it's not depressing at all it's so liberating you realize that your your money your things your job none of these things actually define you and in the end none of them actually matter and um in the process of having cancer i completely redefined what success is and success for me now is having um you know being completely at peace with yourself before you die being it's at peace with who you are being at peace with life and having a couple of people in the world who love you and care about you, for me, that is success now. It's really interesting because it really takes the pressure off our souls when we hear that because you're so right. You know, everybody talks about, you know, material things and what you've been through while you've been powerlifting and doing chemotherapy and writing a whole new innovation course for the university here, one of the largest in Australia, you, you would have had to have come to that conclusion that ultimately you have to reevaluate success. Uh, the next one is 100% commitment. What's your definition of 100% commitment, Jane? All right. So if I'm going up for a PB, a personal best deadlift, if there is a single fraction of your mind that doesn't believe that you can do this, it's just not going to happen. And you know whether the lift is going to make it. You know whether the weight's coming off the floor by the way you walk out onto the stage. If if, if there is even a tiny voice somewhere in the dark recesses of your mind that says, I can't do this or it's not going to happen, I already know the lift isn't going to come off the floor. Uh, you have to see it. So whatever you want to achieve, when the times are you decide you're going to really go for something, you have to see it. I mean, I trained for two years for my first 150 kilo deadlift and there wasn't a day in those two years when I didn't see myself lifting that 150 kilos. Uh, I like I willed it to happen, which I you think probably, uh, no, you have to believe it. Imagination is still, it's, th this is Emunah, Henry, right? So you and I've had conversations over the last two years about the Jewish concept of Emunah. You have to write your future. You have to see it and believe it and know it's going to happen. So it's not imagining it. it it's, it's, so you, this, this it's already written. So this it's already interview, written. This interview in a way was already written. And I believe that too. This interview, this meeting of today, and everybody you're meeting right now was always there anyway. That not, but yeah, and, and that's how my father survived the Second World War. Exactly, exactly right. right. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure if you were going to go there, but yes, like that, and that's why we've connected because yes. Reggie understands probably way more than somebody who's just had cancer the concept of you have to, you have to believe, you have to, you have to believe you can make it. Uh, you know, there's that old phrase, isn't there? Like whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't. Yes. Well, the You're concept right. is, we, as we both discussed and we're discussing now, it's not actually if you believed in the if you believed in the reality, uh, it's never going to be. So it's happening right now. Moving on. Well, and also um, there is no such thing as reality. Your whole life is happening in here. You know what? You love right? the way and, your life and out there is 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 created by what you're seeing in here. Well, may I compliment you because in your book, The Naked Truth About Breast Cancer, coming out 2022, and I'm going to put up in the moment how people can actually go on to your website already to be part of the mailing list and one of the first readers of this extraordinary publication, which I've had the honour of actually doing a pre-read. It's astounding. And a lot of the book is about the philosophies and the spiritualities, and talking of which, allowing it to be organic, Jane. Your take on that? Uh, so there's a nuance. This is part of being an adult in life, like holding nuance. And uh, there are times in life where you really want something and you set out to make it happen. And but there's also a time to tune into the energy of what's happening around you and to understand that this is not the time for this thing to happen and we all know that the times in our lives where we've tried to force things that aren't right it never works out for you um i married a dive instructor i met while i was traveling the world for two years on a beach in hawaii and i knew it wasn't right 
uh, and I was divorced a year later. Um, we've all got those kind of stories in our life, right? So uh, on the one I hand, you have... I never married anybody in Hawaii on a beach. I, I wish I did. <laughs> no, <laughs> it wasn't as romantic as it sounds, and the divorce no. wasn't either. But the, the point is that... Um, we humans overestimate our own importance in this thing called life. Our ego tells us we're the center of the universe. Actually, there is so much going on that is completely out of your control. And very often the art of life is actually a Chinese concept called uwei, which is more like thinking of yourself as a leaf bobbing along on the surface of the ocean, going, you know, going where the ocean takes you. And very often, um, uh, the art of being happy and at peace in life is is being able to just ride the wave and make the best of whatever wave you're on at the time. It's interesting. So you've got to push, but you've also got to know when to pull back. It's like making the perfect yes. path, if I might, might say, as an analogy. Like you've got to put just enough cold water and enough hot water, otherwise you're either going to scold or you're going to be really, really cold. So you've got to know when to see the signs, as you just said. Um, I want to jump on to um, this one because I think this is really profound. And what an amazing interview. Thank you. And that is don't take it all so seriously. So can you explain to us, this is part of your top six tips on um, winning success. Please explain that. To uh, well, as I said earlier, um, uh, you realize when you have cancer or other illnesses that one day you're going to be dead and this ride is going to be over. And most of the things that you've spent your life stressing about uh, you are not going to be thinking about any of them on your deathbed. Um, and uh, what I've realized is that, uh, you know, we spend a lot of our times uh, planning our future or sitting in our past and life is now, life is today. And uh, I had this realization that you have to love every single day of your life. And that's the key to life. Um, like, Life is just a collection of moments. And, um, and, this, and this is a collection of a moment uh, that I'm right. going to say to you. It's profound. And I have to say to all those people who are viewing and listening to us, I, you will not be able to take your hands off this gorgeous coffee table style book that completely changes the face, as far as my knowledge anyway, of the approach towards the naked truth about breast cancer. And it really is about winning, you know, success tips. And, and it, it, it really transcends all to all humanity. Everybody is your target group uh, with this book. I'm going to put you to the back room and I'm going to actually ask all my people who are in their hot seat for the interview. And that is, what's the one thing that you could leave us with regard to winning, uh, you know, the best way of um, winning in life. What's your number one tip? I'm just going to ask you to think about that as we come to 60 seconds before the show is um, completed. Um, as I told you all, uh, amazing show. Uh, Jane Marshall is just a perfect interview for the mindset that we have for the end of the year as we hurtle towards 2021 for those people who celebrated Thanksgiving, Hanukkah coming up, Christmas Eve next year. Um, and it's really taking a look at ourselves and the best way uh, to move forward. So I'm going to bring you back on, Jane Marshall, uh, in the hot seat for one last time. And my question to you is, um, what's your number one tip that you can give us about winning success, success and motivation, success tips, winning in life? Tell us. <laughs> Tell us, Jane, the guru. So, <laughs> winning at life is being at peace with yourself. You have to be able to look yourself in the mirror and fundamentally love who you are for all your flaws and your human foibles. Leave nothing unsaid. If you love people, love them hard, hug them, you know, tell them you love them all the time. If there's something you want to do, get, get out there and do it. If you need to apologize to somebody for something, make your apologies, but be 100% at peace with yourself every single day. Um, I have to tell you, uh, this has been a most enlightening, invigorating, perfect interview for us as we start to evaluate ourselves. We love you. We wish you peace and success and health and happiness for 2020 year two. It's going to be a huge year, if you ask me, for the world. And particularly yes. this, kind, this kind of book is going to be an education for all of us. You've been amazing. I'm going to actually end. Thank you very much, Jane. Um, Thank you for having me.
And um, we're going to have a, another question at the bottom, which we're going to answer to all those people who want to know how to connect with you, Jane. It's all in the comment box below. Thank you and have a great rest of your weekend. Standing applause. You've been amazing. Thanks very much. Love you. Love you very much. Take care. That was Jane Marshall, which um, seeps through to the, the energy and the soul of the core of who we are as human beings. I'm actually going to... It's a um, good... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to just add on one more time because this is extraordinary. I'm going to leave us all with this image of Jane Marshall deadlifting 150 kilograms as part of her life as being a power lifter. Uh, it's part of the makeup of who she is today. And don't forget, next weekend, we have an extraordinary show coming up with the best dressed of 2021 countdown with Lucy Larita in Melbourne and the gorgeous Hannah Littman in Miami, Florida. I'm Henry Weinreich, your host. Thank you for joining us and keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Here's Jane. Uh, oh, it was a good fight nonetheless. And finally, to finish off our deadlifts for this session, 150 kilograms on the bar for Jane Marshall. The bar is loaded. Let's go, Jane. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yes, you got it, you got it, you got it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. 